everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championships. Check in OP Robotics 2056, your number one FRC Top 25 team and number one in all of our hearts as well too. Ontario Provincial winners and absolutely rocking it here at championships. This is an insane robot. Everything that goes into this is so good. Now rocking a five-piece auto as well too. Uh, but so many cool stuff. We're talking about the straightenator, how able to pick up in any orientation of game pieces as well too. There's so much to dive into and I can't wait to learn more about OP Robotics. Come up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Bars let's start to break down this robot here, talking about uh, as we go through the journey of the game pieces, that intake is massive. I'd love to hear more about it. So yeah, at the beginning of the season, we felt uh, we wanted to do a, any orientation pickup to really speed up those cycles as much as we could. So it's it's a near full width intake with a kicker roller and star wheels with lots of compliance. It's a slap down intake, and then it's a chain driven to the pivot. What's super cool is the front end float, so we can show that off here. Um, so if you could put the intake down. So we can go parallel. Oh. <laughs> right, so that was kind of a parallel coral. But the front end floats, and we have a kicker roller and a ramp to do the perpendicular coral. And that allows us to do any orientation. And it's made of uh, Lexan with these uh, clamping aluminum plates to make a nice rigid structure that's quite robust. And it's uh, the rollers are driven by one Kraken, and it pivots by one Kraken. That's a great segue into the straightenator, I wish that you're using as well, too, as we saw that coral come through. I mean, man, the way that you're able to just get every, uh, literally straight, right, based on the straightenator. Just talk to us more about the composition of it. Um, so, yeah, uh, from the intake, which picks up from any orientation, we need to singulate it into one orientation for the gripper. Um, so that means that the straightenator has to straightenate the coral. And we do that by using two X44s on um, both sides, oh, both sides to drive it. So it's driven independently, so we can check the current spikes of each one. And if it comes in perfectly parallel, one side will reverse for a short time and then go back in. So that'll kind of unjam the coral. So that's a very nice feature we have. So I got to ask, the straightenator term, how did that come to be? Um, not, it wasn't not like anything special. Uh, there was like many people calling it a singulator index. Um, one of our students, he was like, when we were designing, he's like, that's a really cool straightenator. And then we just kind of went just off from there. It, right? I know. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Let's keep moving on, pass over to Georgia, and talk about the uh, grip rehab here. Obviously, we saw it uh, for Coral as well, too. I'm assuming manipulating algae with that as well. Uh, yes. So talk to me more about what's all gone into it. So in the beginning of the, the season, we knew that we wanted to have just one mechanism that could control both game pieces. We didn't want to overcomplicate our robots. We knew we wanted just one. So. It has enough torque to pick up algae. It kind of squeezes it, pinches it. Um, and then, as you can see, uh, the shape of it allows it to just kind of lock in here. It takes a lot to peel it out like that. Um, but it's made out of sheet metal um, on a floating dead axle. It moves with the carriage. So when you when you press down on the coral there, you kind of saw like the elevator kind of like reset a little bit, or the gripper kind of reset. Can you just talk about like what what went into that or the reasoning for it? Yep. So there are beam brakes uh, located at the back in the front. Um, in home position, it will the elevator will go down and pick up the coral. So we do that whenever we intake. It automatically goes to home. Um, that's where we. That's kind of the starting position for all of our scoring. So when we go to L4, home is the first position. And then this is also uh, manipulating the algae too, is that correct? Yes. So is there like really any difference like in regards to how it's gripping and stuff or because that's such a tight grip it looks like on that. It is. Uh, like how did you come up with that was the right amount of like compliance essentially to have? Okay, so as you can see it really just pinches it in there. Uh, it's basically just stalling the motors, meaning we can only do it for, sorry, for a certain amount of time. 
Um, yeah. I mean, pitching it's right on there. So like, there's no concerns in regards to popping that or anything like that. That's that's a lot of compression I see. Uh, we found that it, it takes a lot to pop it. The only way that we could really pop it is like by jamming it on uh, the reef. Sure. But it's it's hard to just do it by stalling it. No, that's that's really really cool. So let's pass it over to Steven, Talk about the uh, elevator and the hanger uh, that you have on this as well too. So. Uh, you know, elevator-wise, you guys are going so quick with your cycles. I mean, it is absolutely phenomenal to see. And then the hanger on that, too. Uh, I love these, like, horns that are kind of on this. Like, this is really, really neat. So let's walk through it. Yeah, so we use a internally belted continuous elevator. Uh, we have it powered by two Kraken X60s, um, and it's geared at about a 5 to 1 ratio. Uh, we did that because at the start of the season, we realized how much of a limiting factor our elevator could be in terms of our cycles. Uh, so we really aimed to see how quickly we could move it. Uh, we went with internally belted because our packaging was also a very big concern and that really helped to alleviate some of the problems we could have had. Um, with our hanger, we actually have it driven um, by a single X44. It's geared at an 18 to 1 ratio um, to make sure it can actually it can actually climb with our robot. Um, we use just an Amazon ratchet uh, that we've cut the end off of uh, to prevent our climber from actually back driving our motor uh, which allows us to remain hang to after the match and after those three seconds are over so just very simple process right and then I'm assuming that it's just coming in between here to grab the cage or where does it grip exactly yeah so we use these horns on top of on the end of our climber to help guide in a single peg from the cage um, we can climb in any orientation however we would prefer to have it very square with our climber um, this extra protrusion from the climber also prevents the climb, sorry, the cage, from rotating once it's already in our climber, and it's secured there by a little magnet as well. Love it. Let's pass it back over to Balraj on here. Oh, I mean, something I think is just absolutely phenomenal. You're all able to get the five-piece auto going uh, here at Championships as well. So walk me through just like what what it take to actually get there. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of you know, run the same auto a thousand times and try to save every millisecond from every little spot. So a couple things we've done is we, you know, we started this actually after our first event. We started on an angle for the first game piece and we actually start further away, which sounds weird because you're covering more distance, but the maneuver, because you don't have to rotate as much, it's a much smoother and we can score much faster on the first game piece. And then it's just a lot of optimization on making sure there's no catch points on the intake so the coral goes in really quickly. So minimize the amount of time it takes for the coral to straighten it and then the handoff to occur. You know, minimize how long we take to align. So basically the alignment is like, if we're there for 40 milliseconds, we, we dunk. Like there's, it, we basically, everything, we're cutting everything to the last second, every score, every game piece. And it's just optimizing every path, the way we drop the coral. And uh, the way we write our autos is very simple, but very, di like we can do whatever we want with it. It's uh, We use a drive to point. It's very simple. We just drive from point to point and just string a series of points to create a path. And it's nothing complicated, but you can accomplish whatever, whatever you pa want really easily. I mean, I think that's been kind of the mantra always of OP Robotics, is right, just do it right and get it get it done right. It doesn't need to be overly complex, and I think that's a great thing about OP. One thing I want to ask you, uh, for that five-piece auto, does it have to be a specific auto, or do you have a couple options in regards to getting so five? For the five-piece, we have a specific auto, but we, we have other styles of autos. And one thing I forgot to mention is we have a Limelight 4 here for game piece tracking. So even no matter, like, if the coral starts to veer off to the right or left or whatever, the, the robot automatically aligns, and that's what makes our auto so consistent, is whether the coral drop is good or bad, we have vision to correct. And on the, on the scoring side, there's two cameras for April tag tracking, and we never lose sight of the tag while, track, while scoring, and that's part of what makes our alignment so consistent and reliable, is we always have vision. Let's wrap up on this robot, pass it back to Irush and talk about the controls that you're using as well too. Uh, I mean, just everything goes in this, obviously, the complete package. Walk me through what you're utilizing. Um, so once again, this year, we decided to do uh, one driver, two HPs, because we knew we were going to be floor feeding, and we felt it was essential to have two HPs on both sides. Um, once again, that means one driver, one controller, and all the packaging of this entire robot, the functions have to go into one controller. So we try to automate most things as, like, as much as possible. So from the intake going down to the coral going in, there's no automation for the straightenator or like 
the the shotgun mechanism. That's all. That's all. Um, that's all programmed, which makes the driver's life easier when you're thinking about okay, pick up this game piece, go score over here, and we don't keep track of where we score our game pieces. So our so we have to be eyes up. But one thing that's cool, but like for our uh, reef switching between the different poles is we'll just flick the left stick and it'll go to the left or we'll flick it right and it'll go to the right. And that's very helpful. So like if some team scores and they accidentally de-score it, we don't keep track of it and have to update it again that it's de-scored. Um, and then we do a lot of little things like um, we make sure that the exposure and stuff on the limelights is good so we never lose track of it. So making the driver's life easier that way makes less stress on it. So uh, one like not trick but like a strategy we found throughout the season is what we call hybrid cycles and that means picking up one of the front balls picking up a coral and then scoring the algae at the back and scoring the coral at the back as well which minimizes our cycle times so we'll do something like an algae grab off the net and we'll pick up a coral and then we can do whatever we want with the ball while the algae while the coral is being stored which lets us do two cycles basically at the expense of one. And we use these a lot when we're driving to like the back side of the reef or the net, which makes a floor pickups cycle time very long. Another thing you'll see is we have LEDs. Once again, they're just for visual feedback. So if something's wrong or like a limelight's disconnected, we can look at the lights and know that a limelight's disconnected or it's a game piece one. Um, we also have different scenarios where we use the LEDs for driver feedback when playing the match. So. Um, if we're not ready to score, the lights will be red. And if we are ready within all the tolerances, it'll be blue. Uh, the controller also vibrates when you're in a ready position to score. And just making life like easier in that sense makes the stress of the match much less. Well, you all make it look easy. I know there's a lot of complexities that go into this, so congratulations on a phenomenal season. Can't wait to see how you do here at uh, Worlds of Show. I know you got high aspirations, so can't wait to see the performance of that. But thank you for taking time. Tell us more about this, and good luck the rest of the way here at Championships. And then we'll pick up a coral. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. First teams benefit when they optimize their robots utilizing Altair tools. If you're utilizing Altair, submit a video showing your optimization skills and potentially win up to $5,000 for your team or $2,000 for yourself each quarter from now until June 30th, 2025. Download Altair tools for free and view contest details when you scan the QR code or go to altair.com contest.